But no, we, we, we did it, and I wasn't surprised on it, so this year we're going to be heading out that way later on. The end of the month, actually, we're going to head that way, and I got a, a, a different type of rifle I'm going to see. Uh, I can lift it, I can shoot it. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll eventually put that scene that he did on, on YouTube, people can see, because people don't believe me half the time. But he's, he's very interesting, like I told you guys earlier, I've been with him 13 years. And honestly, it's like a new page. You know, you're reading a book and all of a sudden you can't get any better. It's like, holy moly, look at all this. He does that to me. I mean, I found out I can get better, even better. I'm not like a book you can't get me better. No, get I get better every day. I get more and more amusing and entertaining. <laughs> I just wish I were somebody else so I could enjoy my company. <laughs> I guess thing is funny. It, it, it is because he doesn't understand what he's done to all of us. Max, I wrote just a couple of stories to pay the bills. <laughs> I like every part of the comic book that you read. Somebody mentioned about Doctor Doom. That's him. You know, he wants to take over the world. There's nothing wrong with it. He, he, you want to tell him that story? Yeah. Listen to this. See, I don't think Doctor Doom is really a villain because. All he wants to do is take over the world. Now, let me tell you something you never thought of. You could walk up to any policeman, the first policeman you meet when you leave here. You can say, excuse me, officer, I want to tell you something. Being a nice, courteous officer, he'll say, what is it? And you say, I want to take over the world. There's nothing he can do about it. It is not a crime to want to take over the world. It's not a list of crimes. It's not listed anywhere. So Dr. Doom is not a criminal. He's just a nice guy who wants to take over the world. And I admire him for that. I wish the world would let up on him and you stop calling him a villain. I never call him a villain. He's a misunderstood character. That's all. It's a misunderstood character. That's right. He's misunderstood. Just like me. He wants to take over the world. Just like I want to. You don't have a shot, buddy. <laughs> Sometimes some people say, they say, Stan, I'm your biggest fan, and I just say it in my head, sure you are. Yeah. And I go like that, and they go, Stan, you should see my collection. And I tell myself, you see mine. Yeah. You want to tell him? This guy has what he calls the Stanley Library. Museum. What? Museum. Museum. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather think of myself in, in a library than in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> Two big table cars filled with all the stuff that I've written and drawn, stuff he's stolen from my house for years. Sometimes <laughs> he comes to visit, he thinks I don't see him slipping stuff under his coat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you tell him. Now, one day, um, kind of into where I didn't want to go. One day, uh, I'm at his house, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, his wife at the time said, Max, come in the house. I said, okay. And Stan, you too, Stan, we go in the back, and he says, opens up the door, see all that? Get rid of it. And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm just like, I'm like, uh. And he says, but dear, this is all my personal things. You get rid of it, or I get rid of it. <laughs> so, I told Stan what I was going to do. I put a museum together, so everything he's owned in regards to awards, um, paperwork, first draft, like for the James Cameron, was it Spider-Man, I think it was, he did. Yeah. I, was I got that, and then even the second and third one, these different guys, cool stuff. Uh, Fantastic Four, Doctor Strange, Doom, Silver Surfer, and I'm just like, oh my God, a treasure trove. And this guy one day, I put it out, you can look, you can look it up on, the, the latest one we just put it out there was in, uh, uh, at Mossum Con, and we put 70% of it because the guy thought, oh, this is more than enough, it was 8,000 square feet, it wasn't enough. So if you guys look it up, you'll see it, incredible stuff, and I keep telling myself, I keep patting myself on the back, I'm like, yep, there goes another one, there goes another one, because he had, it's like a mine in his house, I opened one, I said, oh, whoa, this is new, he had, he, well, I can't, um, he got an award from somebody high up, and I asked about it. I said, Stan, you got this award from this tall 
powerful guy, leader of the world, and, and uh, I said, yeah. And I said, hey, where's it at? It's in my room on the cupboard right there. I said, okay, go look around, go find it. I said, Stan, it's not there. Max, it's right there on my desk. I told you on the right side. I go again. I must be blind, I tell him. I have no idea that there's sense. So, <laughs> I walk in, over the, he walks in, and he goes like this, picks it up, and he says, you see, it's right there. And I go, Stan, the pea man gave you that, and you're using it as a coaster. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about? Which <laughs> metal? Well, I'll tell you when I got to laughing. I didn't get it for laughing, I just left. I know. There was once a president named Bush. <laughs> Which Bush was he? <laughs> Second Bush. And he decided to give a few medals out to people who had done wonderful things for entertainment. Naturally, I handed the list. <laughs> so anyway, I went there and someone else who got an award was Olivia de Havilland, who oh, usually oh. played the leading lady to Errol Flynn in all of his movies. So he gave her the award ahead of me. I stood behind her. She came up first. And he put this little thing around her neck, and then he gave her a little kiss on the cheek. And she left, and now it was my turn. So he put the thing around my neck, and I don't know what made me say it, <clears throat> but I said to him, you're not going to kiss me too, are you? <laughs> and he burst out laughing, and I was laughing, and a photographer took a picture of the two of us laughing uproariously. Anybody looking at the picture would think we're bosom buddies, you know? <laughs> My pal Bush. <laughs> then I got another one with Ronald Reagan. I might as well name drop a few more. <laughs> <laughs> this one I will never forget. We were at some sort of a dinner, and he was sitting at a, there was a long table with people sitting on this side and this side, facing each other. I'm sitting facing Ronald Reagan. He was sitting there, I was sitting here, hoping that my table manners were good enough. And um, he's sitting there, and I figured I've got to say something to him. Well, what do you say to the ex-president of the United States? and such a terrific president. So all I could think of, I said, Mr. President, you must be so relieved that you're not in office anymore and you don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders. And he looked at me with his eyes wide with such enthusiasm and he said, no, I love being president. <laughs> but the way he said it, I'll never forget it. I love being president. That's what I'm, I plan to say when I'm elected president. I don't know how they miss me so far. <laughs> <laughs> You saw, you had your cameos done, and the two best ones, the one that you like the most right now, is the one with you and Thor when you have that drink, but yet you make a, you like it because it had two seats. Giving away the whole, the, no, no, my, my no. whole bit. He just gave away my whole bit. Everybody asked me what's my favorite cameo, and I mentioned the Thor one, and they say why, and I say because it had two scenes. And that gets a big reaction. This guy just blew it in 10 seconds. Are you going to do that to all my little stories? No, 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 say him first. No, because say him dull and lifeless. And, you know, and I'm sitting here full of personality and I'm getting it. Everybody tells me you got the greatest job. What I was getting to. Is that that one you have two seats, but in Guardians of the Galaxy you have three. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. Well, now I can use you because I forgot one other scene. It's the one that you're at. Is it your okay? No, no, they may not have no, seen, they've the seen movie. it. You guys, they better have seen it. And you know, the only reason they go to the movie is for the cameo, so <laughs> you. Can... <laughs> I'm going to tell you 
why Marvel movies make so much money. It's because of the cameos, but for this reason. <laughs> let's say you're sitting in the theater, you're watching a movie, and you think you'd like some popcorn. So you go like that, and you reach around, you look for the popcorn. At that second, the cameo is on the screen, and you miss it. Now, the movie comes to an end, and you say, Geez, I missed the cameo! So what do you do? You run right to the box office, <laughs> and you buy another ticket, because nobody is going to miss a cameo, and you sit through the movie again. Now, it's all those double tickets that have made Marvel so successful. <laughs> now, you know the secret. Now, what were you saying? So I was saying to him, you guys seen the movie, right? Yeah. 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 See, Which The movie, The Guardians of the Galaxy Part 2. Which one if you haven't you seen it, we'll ask you to leave. <laughs> Which one do you guys think is better? Thor, the Avengers one where he's in there with the drink? Or the one that he's as He's as the watcher. Which one's better? Guardians. Oh, see, it's the Guardians. I'm watching right now. <laughs> it's funny because when we did, you guys see the newest one, right? The third, the third part, the third cameo I'm saying is the one that he did the music video. You guys see that? Oh, okay, yeah. He didn't get it. <laughs> we're, we were there filming, and then uh, they said, Stan, we're going to dress you like this, disco era, and I was like, oh my god, you look like the Bee Gees again. <laughs> and so they put the sideburns on, and then he comes out and he does this. <laughs> and he couldn't get him, and then Dave Batista's in the corner, you know, with his rocking out. I'm just like, he was really just getting into the groove, and he's like, why can't I do that? Why can't I wear a shirt like that? Have my chest taken out? Why can't I? I couldn't go, but it's funny with him, man. When we do cameo, because honestly, he doesn't know what he's going to do there. They just stand, put this on, do this, and say that. But my point to this, if you guys think, obviously, the, the Watcher one was great. We did the Thor one, the Rat Rock, I think it's called. Yeah, we did that. We did both Avengers, we did into one part, one and two, awesome. And then we did Ant-Man. Of all the cameos that he's ever done, the only one that he actually kind of had more control over was the Thor one. That one. You haven't seen that yet. That one is so awesome because he's actually- Because I did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was him, the, the, the Taika, I think is the director. Stan was like, this is what you want me to do? This little line? And then Tyka said, you know what, Stan? Do what you want. Oh. And he did it. You'll it. never raise me that again. <laughs> <laughs> that scene is so awesome. You guys see it when it comes out at the end of the year. Wait until you see it, then you're going to know what I mean. It's like the best you one. remember, you heard about it here. And you get such a glowing feeling inside. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. It was good, but uh, let's see. What's the whole? Oh, it's nice meeting you all. <laughs>